From Las Vegas, Nevada, it is Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. We are inside the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, just off the strip. And a great atmosphere inside, particularly throngs of Utah State fans for the WAC Championship game. And their Aggies lead the Boise State Broncos 35 to 33. Dave Fleming, Sean Farnham back with you here from Las Vegas. And Sean, for everybody around college basketball, as a fabulous championship week comes to an end, we're just hours away from the field of 68 being revealed. This becomes a critical 20 minutes of basketball. You think about Utah State, they are a lock right now, according to Joel Lenardi, into the NCAA tournament. If Boise State wins this second half, and wins this game, they will burst a bubble of a team from a power conference. Now remember though, Utah State has won 48 consecutive games where they have led at the half. But just a two point lead here for the Aggies. They were up by as many as 12 in the first half. Sean, right at the top of our show, you said point guard play was gonna be so critical and man was it in the first half. LaShard Anderson was contained in the early portion of this game, but in the second half of the first half, he took over the game. From the outside, inside, he did a little bit of everything. Brock Keith Payne was steady throughout the course of the first half, really paced them overall. And he needs to continue to attack the basket, be aggressive, and pick up fouls down low. You see the numbers for both these two. Very efficient. LaShard Anderson stat, though, as you pointed out in the first half, he needs to get his teammates involved. The assist numbers, not there yet. So Anderson and Payne, tremendous first halves. And there are a lot of nervous fans of all those bubble teams around college basketball who are with us. For this final 20 minutes, the WAC championship on the line from Las Vegas. Boise State trying to steal a bid from somebody if they can beat the Aggies and get themselves into the tournament. First possession, Utah State scores Nate Bendel with the jump shot. And Bendel struggled in the first half to find his rhythm. That could be a good sign for Utah State. And that's what Boise State wants to give up. I talked to their coaching staff just seconds ago. They said, we felt like we settled for too many threes on our offensive end of the floor. Defensively, we want them to continue to shoot out over the top. Now a big time collision, Wesley and Arnold, as Boise State tried for an alley-oop kind of play with Arnold cutting along the baseline. Wesley hit the ground very hard, but he's the guy who gets called for the personal foul. A good sportsmanship there after both of them get up from the ground. Ty Wesley is one of those physical players. He's broken his nose a bunch of times. Broke it earlier this season, actually, in practice. Brady Jardine caught him with an elbow. Wore a face mask for a couple of games and then threw it off because he said, you know what, I can't see, I can't breathe out of it. Doesn't matter anyways. Now, there are lots of players who'd still be wearing that mask right now, but not Ty Wesley. Now a pass down low to the freshman Ryan Watkins. Double team and a whistle blown. They're calling another foul against Utah State, and Bendel now is incredulous. Boise State can pick up some early fouls and get into the one-on-one. -on -one. I think that really will benefit them the earlier they can get into the one-on-one -on -one here in the second half because they are an aggressive team that likes to get to the free throw line. Fresh shot clock for the Broncos, down by four against the powerhouse team from the WAC, Utah State 17th ranked team of the country. Here's LeShard Anderson, short on the jumper. Difficult shot, and on that one, he was really going away from the hoop. That's why it came up a little bit short. Bendel takes the bounce pass, had it poked away. And here comes LeShard Anderson, so quick end to end. Anderson, scoop shot with the foul no they're calling LaShard Anderson for the offensive foul at first look I thought that one was going in the opposite direction the official underneath they looked at each other and when the outside official pointed in the opposite direction the underneath official must have agreed Short Anderson, he can't believe it. Utah State fans, they're excited about it. That's two on Anderson. Uh, everybody here in this building, and uh, I think I was included in that group, thought the call was going against Ty Wesley in Utah State, but ball back to the Aggies here. Four-point lead and the ball. And that would have been a big call. Who Williams, nice catch in the reverse layup. Good athleticism by Pooh Williams. The recognition of the strong side wasn't going to work. And the defense from Nate Bendel with the steal. The Aggies trying to make a push here in the early minutes of the second half. Rocky Payne will get a call from the sideline and run the half-court offense. Anderson harassing Pooh Williams. 
Now some help with Payne. Bendel down the lane. Bendel blocking foul. Count the bucket. And Coach Rice doesn't like that call. He feels as if it was the same call that went against him at the opposite end of the floor where Ty Wesley would have picked up his third and LaShawn Anderson would have been at the free throw line instead. The Utah State Aggies fans, they're feeling it coming out of the brick, Dave. And that's the fourth foul against Montreal. Championship game in the whack here for Las Vegas. Eight-point lead for Utah State early in the second half. And Sean, a couple of calls in the last minute. Both went against the Broncos. All right, here's the first call. And you see Ty Wesley sliding over. LaShard Anderson trying to avoid him, but yet made the contact. No goes to the charge. LaShard Anderson's reaction? I have no problem with that. He's a little upset by it. Opposite end of the floor. Kind of looks pretty similar to me, partner. Both of them went against Boise State. And now that's a big bucket because this could balloon up to a nine-point lead for Boise State very in the early stages here of the second half. Mendel makes it a nine-point advantage for the Aggies. The lead was two at halftime, and the Broncos extremely upset during that timeout. Their head coach, Leon Rice, was chewing on the officials over that last sequence. A critical moment here early in the second half. Off the bench, Paul Noonan steps into a two and missed the shot. The momentum of this game with Utah State right now. Looking for Bendel again. He's become real active underneath the basket. Nate Bendel, a non-factor in the first half, has exploded here in the second half. He's now got 10 points. The main buckets allow them to go back into the zone that has caused some issues for Boise State. Arnold in the corner. Broncos need some points here. Utah State is on a run. They need this guy, LaShard Anderson, their star, their leader. Anderson going through the defense, scoop shot, no good. Payne quickly into the front court for the Aggies. Wesley trails a rare three from the last player of the year. And it's all gone right for Utah State. Watkins the shot fake gets the foul and the bucket that stops the run and more importantly that puts three personal fouls on Ty Wesley who at the opposite end of the floor in transition a rare spot up three and he drains it and the emotional leader the vocal leader of Utah State leading the way look that look in his eye he's got that look sometimes and he can just take it to another level. Seventh career three, fifth one he's hit this season, so it doesn't happen very often, but it was a big shot. He will go to the bench with the three fouls, and Watkins, the freshman, completed a very important three-point play for Boise State. Boise State now has to attack Utah State down low on the block without Ty Wesley in the game. It leaves a gap in a hole inside. Now they come up with a steal on the perimeter here. Trey Nichols on the fast break. Missed the layup, but Jardine got up there on the rim. That'll be defensive interference and count the bucket for the Broncos. No need for that grab. That ball was rolling out of the rim. Jardine had perfect position. Just anticipation a little bit too early. And he grabbed that one right off the iron. That might have been a victim of his own great vertical leaping ability. Jardine, a spectacular athlete. Pooh Williams. Bendel, shot fake. Williams will shoot the three. No good. See if that Ty Wesley foul right after that three sucks some of the air out of Utah State. Boise State has got to be patient in their offensive sets. Not settling for the open look, but trying to work it around to find a great look. Nichols, that's a pretty tough shot, but he makes it. That's not necessarily the patience I'm talking about. I think at this point in time, Boise State's going to take anything they can. Well, the Broncos know in the first half they were down by 12. They came back and took a lead. So they've already come from behind in this game, trying to do it again. Nate Bendel was fouled, a reach over from Watkins. The freshman for Boise commits the personal foul. The Aggies on a run here early in the second half. They brought their fans, even on the neutral site, one of the great six man.
amazing. When we go to Logan, Utah, the Utah State Aggies have one of the great home court advantages in all of college hoops. And Sean, they have brought that advantage here to Las Vegas. Remarkable. Nationally, they do not get enough credit for not only just being a great crowd, but a smart crowd. One of the smartest student sections in the entire country. And it's so fun to be in Logan for a game there, but uh, these Aggies fans have come in huge numbers to the Orleans Arena for the championship of the WAC and given their Aggies a boost here tonight. Off the inbound, Newbold missed the jump shot, rebound, tapped around, who's going to get it? Jardine fighting for the ball. Looked like it went off of Jardine, and it did, out of bounds. It'll be Boise State basketball. A lot of physical contact going on in this game, and the importance of it is, is clear, and we can't understate the importance if Boise State is to win this game, what that means for other teams in power conferences that are sitting on that bubble right now trying to figure out whether or not they're in or out of the NCAA tournament. Because Boise State, if they lose, they're not going to be in. If they win, they will be. Utah State will be in no matter what. So that essentially is a spot in the tournament taken away from somebody else if the Broncos get a victory here tonight. And Watkins was knocking down those shots last night. Tonight, not falling for them. Tougher against these Aggies of Utah State. Brian Green gave Utah State a nice scoring punch off the bench of the first half. Picked up his dribble here, has to get it to Brocky Payne. Comes off the screen, Brian Green. Had his shot rejected, got it back though and scored. Good job staying with the play. Active hands, identifying where the ball was quickly. Payne tries to rip it away and he does. What a pass from Payne. Green layup good. And it's Brocky Payne that initiated and got it all going with his quick hands on the defensive end. As LaShard Anderson got a little loose with his handle. Brian Green having a nice night. Utah State 11-point advantage. They led by two at halftime. Nichols for three, way too short. The rebound poked around, and Boise State will get it back. Nichols draws a foul. Some hustle on this end, but some tremendous hustle from Rocky Payne. Usually it's Boise State benefiting from turnovers, but this time it's Utah State creating them. And Brian Green with the run out. I think Brady Jardine was looking to try to get the lob, but the crowd feeling it and sensing that this game is starting to head their way. An 11 point lead right now. Well, that smart crowd that you were talking about, they appreciate the basketball there. Utah State Aggies are playing. Nichols at the free throw line, makes the first. That foul was against Brady Jardine. He's got three, so Wesley and Jardine, two key players down low for Utah State, each with three personal fouls. It's still just about 14 minutes to go. Two personal fouls, though, in the first minute and a half of the second half. Went against Utah State since then, just two fouls against them, and that's because Boise State has not been aggressive in attacking the rim. Nine-point advantage, some pressure here for the Broncos. Double team comes, Payne trapped, gets it out to Green. Now Jardine from near that free throw line, gets his own miss! What a putback! You mentioned his athleticism, standing third to 37, one step, 43 inches. He can get up. And I think that was the 43 variety. Nichols, again, comes up short out of bounds off of Utah State. Broncos basketball. Brady Jardine, one of the best athletes in the West region of the United States. Look at him just going back up, grabs it with two, able to throw it back towards the rim. And you give him a space, he can fly. He's an X-Factor player for this Utah State team. There's a three. No good from Noonan. Rebound, Nate Bendel. Noonan struggling from the outside. 9-0 on the season. Boise State is when he hits three three-pointers. He doesn't have one so far tonight. His shot not falling like it was in yesterday's game. Bendel shoots a two. That was way off the mark. Richard Anderson surveys. It got cut off. The defense got back. Tried that bounce pass. What a play! That was a beautiful wraparound pass by LaShard Anderson. A sense of where his teammate was going. And a good decision by him. 
Sean Amadi, the beneficiary of that great look from Anderson. Houston State here, the half court offense. Rocky Payne, Jardine catches, elevates, offensive foul. Going against Jardine, that's number four. So foul trouble's an issue. Ty Wesley checks back into the game immediately with three. And a good job in the defensive rotations in Jardine. Just went right through him. That's an easy one. Jardine on the bench. Bendel also gets a rest. So not only Wesley in, but Morgan Grimm, who does not play big minutes. They need some contribution from Morgan Grimm, who's defending Anderson here and forced a missed shot. Here come the Aggies, and now a push off against Payne. And all of a sudden, real quickly, you got 16 fouls now against Utah State. The next one puts you in a one on one with 12 minutes left to go. You also have a player and a key player down. There's the call. Payne pushes off against Nichols. So Payne gets called for the foul. And Ty Wesley is hurting underneath the opposite basket. And uh, Wesley looks to be shaken up. And Wesley may have to come out of this game. Ty Wesley is hurting. He went down in a heap, a collision behind the play as Payne was rushing it up the court. Wesley was still on the ground. Well, let's watch this last possession and see the contact. The battle for the ball underneath. And both guys just fell to the floor. I don't see anything that could be reviewed. The officials are taking a look at this to see if there was any excessive contact. If anything, I think it was Ty Wesley pulling down Sean Amati. Yeah, it was almost a tackle play. Now, they're not going to call an extra foul there, but Ty Wesley's in some serious pain right now with 12.06 to go. He's had a solid game, but this is the WAC player of the year, an experienced, strong, tough-minded player, and the clear leader of this Utah State team. Broncos of Boise State hanging around here. Championship game, automatic berth to the NCAA tournament is on the line tonight here in Las Vegas. Jeff Valoriaga, freshman, perimeter player, gives it up, and now it's Lashard Anderson. Against Newbold's defense. Anderson, tough pass. They find Nichols along the baseline. He throws it away, but Valoriaga gets it back. Shot clock did not reset. Bro play for three. Boise State, just one of those teams that will keep fighting and scrapping. They're not going to go away, and they've proven that, even with large deficits in both halves now. Twice they've come from behind. Payne, and they'll call a foul. Payne was falling backwards. Contact, the whistle went against Deloriaga. The senior, Anderson, pulls the freshman away from the official and tells him, don't die. And congratulations to UConn. What an accomplishment, an heroic performance this week at Madison Square Garden from the New York City native. Kemba Walker, five games, five days, and just tremendous all-around production from the star for the UConn Huskies, who are the Big East champions. Two more championship games on the line on Sunday as championship week wraps up. SEC, Kentucky, Florida, 1 Eastern, same time on ESPN, North Carolina, and Duke. Championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods, and it all finishes up tomorrow, Sunday afternoon. When you look at Kemba Walker and what he was able to accomplish this week, you, you close your eyes. It seems like just yesterday they were with Maui and his unbelievable performances that he had throughout the course of the year. And there's that discussion, can you win the National Player of the Year award without winning the Player of the Year award in your conference? <laughs> Kemba might be that guy. Uh, some, some folks in the Big East might want to reconsider as great as Ben Hansborough was this season, and he was great. Kemba Walker, just tremendous. Here we are in the WAC in Las Vegas and a very important game, not just in this league, but across the college basketball landscape just a matter of hours until the field of 68 is revealed and a spot is really on the line here in several different ways as Utah State turns it over and the Broncos who have fought from behind in this game almost all the way have a possession to try to get closer. I attack Ty Wesley right away. I try to get him to pick up his fourth personal foul. 
And Nichols dribbling a lot here on this possession. Thomas pro play freshman hit a big three a few moments ago. Now it's the senior, Lashard Anderson. Under 10 to shoot. Anderson against Tyler Newbold. A three-pointer, no good. And this game is being played at Utah State. Speed and tempo. They already got 53 points with 10 minutes left to go, but they're slowing down the pace of Boise State. Aggies on offense now. 17th ranked team of the country, 29 and 3. They were 15 and 1 in the WAC this year. Wesley back to the basket, making his move. The player of the year in the league came up short. Grim with the follow, no good. Now Wesley picks it away from Aloriaga. Ty Wesley on the break, it's fouled. Aloriaga is going to make him earn it. And wow, what a risky play that was at the opposite end of the floor. A reach in by Ty Wesley with four, with three personal fouls could have easily been his fourth personal foul. Yeah, I think he did it cleanly, but you're right. The last thing that Stu Morrow would want to see is his senior, his leader, player of the year in this league, pick up a fourth foul 40 feet away from the basket. He makes the first of two free throws. Ty Wesley's had to work hard for everything. Only five official field goal attempts. Boise State has double teamed, sometimes triple teamed him when he's caught the ball on the offensive end. He misses the second free throw. Broncos were down by 12 early in this second half. They were down by two at halftime, but the Aggies made a real run early on. Boise State hanging around, though. Anderson. Almost had it ripped away. Switches to the left hand beautifully. They need a lot more from LaShard Anderson here in the second half. He has been very stagnant at the offensive end. First time we've seen him get to the rim. You mentioned the broken nose, too, of Ty Wesley. He took another shot to the face on that play, and he's holding his nose right now on the offensive side. We'll pay attention to that. Wesley has the ball now. Who Williams posting up against Anderson. Williams trying to muscle his way in, but there was Anderson to poke it away. LaShard Anderson not slowing down. Kicks it back out, though, to Nichols. Now Anderson with a shot fake for three. Air ball and a foul against Boise State. And watch Ty Wesley on this drive by LaShard Anderson as he goes up. A little hit right to the nose with that left hand. You watch when he goes up with the right, or he goes up with the left, rather, the left hand comes swinging right back and hit Ty Wesley in the face. Totally <laughs> unintentional, Sean, but it's become a real factor for Wesley down the stretch of this season. I've never seen a player get hit more in the face than Ty Wesley does. Now three on two, breaking the pressure. Brian Green, Paul Williams missed the dunk. Opportunity missed for Utah State. Nichols poked away. Loose ball, scramble. Green has it. Gets rid of it to Morgan Grimm. Now the outlet. And now it's three on one. Wesley finishes. No dunk, but it's two points. And that's what Ty Wesley does. He's a fishing basketball player and out in transition. Doesn't try to do too much. Make sure. Amadi against Wesley with those fouls, gives it up, and it was a bad pass. Turnover, Boise State. Broncos have gotten real sloppy with the basketball. It may be desperation time for Boise State. They're bringing Daquan Montreal off the bench. He's got four personal fouls, so he's in foul trouble, but back out there for the Broncos. A seven point lead, plenty of time left to go on the clock, but Boise State is playing like a team with a minute left to go in a game and down by 10. They've been ragged all of a sudden, playing defense on this possession. Rocky Payne, a two, too strong. Grimm taps it up in the air, but out of bounds. Broncos basketball. 
who Williams missed a big one. Ty Wesley, he wasn't going to allow that to happen. Out in transition, the MVP of the conference, running the outside lane with the easy finish of the Utah State Aggies. Here from Las Vegas, end-to-end -end action in Utah State with an advantage here in the second half and an overall seven-point lead here in the WAC championship game. And the Aggies with a historic kind of season. They've been the power in this WAC conference, but this year even extra special. 17th ranked in the country looking for their 30th win here tonight. And at one point in time, they had won 17 consecutive games. They lost one, and then they've gone off on another spurt. Stu Morrill, the pitcher of consistency, and everybody talks about strength of schedule. Find me a team from a power conference that will return a game to Logan, and Stu Morrill will sign them up. They went out, they went to Maryland, they went back to Washington, D.C., they played Georgetown, you know, but Stu Morrill says, look, we, we get over 10,000 plus a night. We need to get our home games in. BYU will play there, but basically no other power team wants to come to Logan. Out of the timeout, long three offensive rebound for the Broncos. Utah State just keeps winning games year after year. They've done it again this season. Loriaga, a little shot fake. Shard Anderson with plenty of time on the shot clock. Has it knocked away. Stolen. Brian Green on the break. Green. Wild pass, dangerous pass, and he gave it up, and now a foul going against Morgan Grimm and the Aggies. That'll be one and one free throws at the other end, and that's something that Sean talked about early in the half. If Boise State can be aggressive enough, part of their comeback can be at the free throw line. Yeah, not the guy you want at the free throw line, though. Perryman, just a 59% free throw shooter. But elongating this game with a 10-point lead and getting which should be easy points at the free throw line. Very key to Boise State in the final 659. Every point will be critical here against the powerful Aggies of Utah State. One and one free throws. Berryman makes the first, earns a second. For Utah State, you don't want to send this team to the free throw line because they have struggled to find looks in the second half with any kind of proficiency. Just 37% shooting from the field in the second half for Boise State. Missed the second. Rebound, Pooh Williams. The Broncos can't afford to have those misses add up at the line. Now Boise State playing defense. Rocky Fain trying to get the ball inside. Instead, Grimm catches on the perimeter. A lot of contact there by LaShard Anderson. Lucky he didn't get called for one. Anderson trying to be as physical as possible on the defensive end. Stole it there. Got a hand on it. Two on one. Noonan dishes. And the layup is good. And just like that, it's a four-point game. Two-possession game for Boise State. And any time they've had a run, it has started with turnovers that they've created the defensive end, allowing them to get out in transition and not go against the half-court set defense of Utah State. So the Broncos will not go away in this game. Aggies have had some big leads, but it's tight again. Four-point advantage. Green, tough shot, no good. Grimm with the follow. No basket. Offensive foul. And the Utah State fans, Stu Morrill, Morgan Grimm himself, they cannot believe it. An over-the-back call, and that's going to be free throws for Boise State. Morgan Grimm underneath, going right to the rim. And that is a tough call, just as tough as those calls were in the first half. Well, I talked about the charge that would have gone against Ty Wesley, the charge that comes down here in the early stage of the second half. I think that one should have gone the way of Utah State. Well, Loriaga was down there and got knocked off balance a little bit, but now he goes to the free throw line here and makes the first of the one and one. And Sean, around the country now, fans of 
pick some teams Clemson Virginia Tech USC Alabama Boston College can start to get real nervous here Boise State has made this a game once again and Aloriaga makes both free throws only 12 free throw attempts on the season that was 11 and 12 right there he toes the line and knocks him down we got a one possession game Broncos flying around now playing with a little more pep in their step in the last few minutes Perryman tough defense on Brocky Payne who slips avoided the turnover now Wesley gets fouled from behind they'll call a foul against Boise State this time and that'll be four on Noonan now he's an important player comes off the bench but a guy that Boise State in crunch time often will have on the floor so that's a big story for the Broncos he'll come out but another guy with four fouls Daquan Montreal comes back in for Boise State Wesley at the free throw line he shoots a lot of them not a great free throw shooter 72 percent missed the front end Utah State is allowing Boise State to have opportunity after opportunity to not only get back into this game but to take a lead in this contest they can do it with a three good catch there by Montreal faces with his four fouls shot does not go Wesley defensive rebound That has gotten rough and tumble here in the second half, indicative of what's on the line. Wesley pulls his way in and scores with the foul. The conference MVP has not had an outstanding game so far tonight. Is this so strong and so physical? You have to have a help side defense awareness immediately on the catch when he's on the perimeter because if he sees one man in front of him, he is going to the rim. Now, there are very few players in college basketball who love the contact more than this guy, Ty Wesley. Converts the three point play. And I think that makes amends for the missed one on one. Five point game. Lashard Anderson, the star of Boise State. Montreal down low against Nate Bendel up and under with the left hand. Now the Broncos after that make will set up a little bit of pressure here. Perryman trying to harass Brocky Payne. Payne trapped finds Newbold. Bendel almost traveled. Now pinned down low. Wesley cuts to the basket. That's just great movement without the ball from the three-point line right down the middle of the lane. Nobody saw him. Anderson passed up the three. Really looking to get the ball inside the last few possessions. Nearing the four-minute mark to go here in the WAC championship game. Under 10 to shoot. Montreal poked away. Loose ball. Wesley comes away with it. Five point lead for Brocky Payne, and he had it stolen. Boise State has not gotten a lot of clean looks at the iron. Anderson draws the foul. Nifty move by Lashard Anderson. And when we come back here to Las Vegas, Anderson at the free throw line to make this even closer. Boise State looking for the upset. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Dick Sporting. This championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods, the WAC championship from Las Vegas. 61-56, the lead for the top seed, Utah State. Well, tomorrow is the big day. Sunday, Selection Sunday, and you want to spend it with us. Three Eastern Bracketology presented by Staples. Sports Center at 6 Eastern on ESPN as the brackets are revealed. And then the full Bracketology, again, presented by Staples at 7 when our experts take over and break down that entire field of 68. You will not want to miss it tomorrow. 
as we take a look at the very latest from our bracketology expert Joe Lunardi last four in first four out and Sean again explain to our audience why for our particular game that is so critical. Well you look at all eight of these teams they're right there on that line Utah State is a lock. I talked to Joe Lunardi earlier today he said no matter what happens Utah State is in the NCAA tournament. There is no way Boise State gets in unless they win tonight which means that the WAC would go from a one bid conference to a two bid conference meaning one of those eight teams for sure is moving even further down that list. Uh, critical importance this game here and Boise State has not gone away twice Utah State has had 12 point leads once in the first half once early here in the second half but Lashard Anderson and the Broncos hanging around looking for the upset the two free throws make it a three point lead. This full court pressure has been good for them. They've got their hands very active and tipped a lot of balls. Wesley on the perimeter. Gets it back to the point guard, Brocky Payne. Payne had a big first half. He's been pretty quiet here in the second half. Wesley, it was poked away, but they'll call a foul. A reach in foul. And that'll set Todd Wesley back to the free throw line. I think Coach Rice would rather see them try to get a stop in that instance. You got to be aggressive, but you got to pick and choose your points to try to get your hands on the ball. And as part of the problem being such a ball hawking, aggressive defensive team, when the other team's in the bonus, sometimes yep. that aggression can work against you. Montreal, with his four fouls, comes back in. One and one free throws here for the player of the year on the whack. Ty Wesley makes the first. Free throws for Wesley and Utah State back up by five. And Wesley very quietly has 16 points now in the game. Very solid game here for Wesley. Seven rebounds, three assists. Doing a little bit of everything. Here's Arnold for three off the mark. Rebound. Bendel rips it away. A quick three from the outside. Not a good look. Arnold had one of those in the first half. I said wasn't a good look, and that one wasn't any better. Under three minutes to play in Las Vegas. Rocky Payne dribbling on the perimeter. Shot clock already now down to 10. Payne crossover move. He's going to go all the way and lay it in. And a quick timeout for Stu Morrill and Utah State. And what a beautiful job it was by Brock Keith Payne. This is a designed isolation play for Brock Keith Payne. It's going to be his decision. Watch as he dribbles the ball over and the screen gets set. Freeze it right here, fellas. What you see is nothing on this side of the floor. It is false action going on all over here. And because of that, easy lane to the rim as he rejects the screen. The defense shifts over. No help side is back. Easy layup, Brock Keith Payne. So a design set there from Utah State and Rocky Payne good enough to take advantage of it. He is such a solid player on the perimeter for this Aggies team looking for their 30th win of the year and a WAC championship after being the regular season champs. And the key to that read for rejecting the screen was the back line defensive player Montreal showed and reacted early and that's what gave him that gap and hole. Crunch time here, seven point lead for Utah State. Boise State cannot afford to waste possessions. Bashard Anderson making his move, gives it up. Noonan back to Anderson. Newbold playing some solid man to man defense. Anderson nowhere to go. And the shot clock down below 10. This is Utah State. Here's Anderson in and out. It did everything but go down. Well, that's Utah State, though. That's their defense. They want you to utilize a lot of clock and make you work to try to find good looks. Clock is on Utah State's side now for sure. Brian Green hands back to Payne. Under two minutes to go. Aggies getting closer to a WAC tournament championship. 
New Bowl. The end of the defense. Bounces it. Bendel scores! Aloriaga for three. Air ball. And it's starting to look bleak for the Broncos of Boise State. As this crowd has come to more life, this team has responded. Bendel with a huge second half, and you just have that look out on the floor. You look at Newbold, you look at Bendel, you look at Green, and in their eyes, they can smell it right now. Boise State's been a tough, resilient team, and they come up with a steal here. Noonan for three. That one's short. Ball tipped out of bounds. It's off of Wesley, so the Broncos will keep it. Boise State, they need points and they need them right now. They'll get Montreal back in with four fouls since they have the possession. Keep him on the offensive end. Now this desperation time for Boise State. They cannot waste a lot of time down by nine. Got to go quickly. Loriaga had it poked away from behind. Montreal saves it. Noonan, they need the three. Too strong. Noonan taps it back to Anderson. Here's Loriaga. Hits three. Good. And a timeout for Leon Rice and Boise State. They've still got some life here with one minute to go. It's a two possession game. Six point lead for Utah State, 67 to 61. We are here in Las Vegas. Dave Fleming, Sean Farnham with you. And a lot at stake, Sean. Not just the WAC Tournament Championship and the automatic bid, but Boise State trying to steal one of those spots. And you have to admire the Broncos, the resilient team that they've been. They came in with a lot of momentum, but Utah State is just so, so tough. Utah State is one of those teams that is as disciplined as any team is in the country. Stu Moore runs complex offenses, sets a lot of screens. We've seen a lot of that action tonight. But the one thing that he told us, and he told us this a couple of weeks ago, this is the best defensive team he has ever coached. And they are playing like it here in the second half. They are limiting the easy looks for Boise State. How many uncontested shots has Boise State had here in the second half? You could probably count them on one hand. Very, very few. And the defense has put the Aggies of Utah State one minute away from that WAC championship. And remember, it's not like nothing's on the line for the Aggies. Utah State, they're going to be in the field of 68. But a tournament title here, you would think, would improve their seeding, their chances of maybe making a run in the tournament. I always love teams that get regular season and conference tournament championships. Big time winning team against the pressure, Utah State. And Boise State at some point has to either turn it over or get a foul. They turn it over. Eloriaga gets fouled from behind, and he'll go to the free throw line. And an uncharacteristic mistake by Utah State. Boise State is not done yet. And Stu Morrill goes ahead and sits back down on his chair in frustration of sitting down because his team just not executing and handling the pressure well at all. I think Bendel knew he made a mistake. He was going to hustle back and at least prevent the layup there. But the freshman, Jeff Aloriaga from Portland, Oregon, at the free throw line. Boise State needs every point they can get. They get one there. So still nervous fans around the country. Of so many of those bubble teams, the Broncos, not going away. And more pressure from Boise State. Wesley will use a timeout. They'll have two left. And that's Boise State active in their pressure. They need to create a turnover, though, coming out of this timeout. Otherwise, you're going to have to look to foul. So the two teams will huddle it up here. 48.2 seconds to go. Sunday night, ESPN Films will present the Fab Five, a documentary that will chronicle one of the most famous, infamous, spectacular teams in college basketball history, Michigan's Fab Five, with Chris Weber, Jalen Rose, Jawan Howard and company. It's a fantastic beast. Nine Eastern on ESPN Sunday. And here we are in Las Vegas for the WAC championship. Utah State 17th ranked team of the country 29 and 3 a couple of timeouts left both teams shooting free throws possession arrow does favor the Broncos which is an important point to make with their pressure full court defense here 48.2 to go a, a great free throw shooting lineup in the worst free throw shooter on the floor is Ty Wesley on the season at 22 percent I mean 72 percent excuse me 
He's the inbounder, gets it into Payne. He'll go right back to Wesley. The trap in the backcourt. And he'll get it into Brian Green. Utah State with the ball. Green bounces it to Bendel, lays it in. They sped him up, but a missed opportunity to foul Ty Wesley. Now Anderson Good with a lot of contact. Wesley the rebound and now a foul. And Anderson cannot believe it. And Anderson's not the only one. Coach Rice shaking his head, walking down that sideline. But I go back to the previous possession. I understand wanting to create pressure and trying to get the turnover opportunity. But I think you got to foul right away with 48.2 seconds left to go and extend out this game. They did not do that. Now Wesley at the line, the double bonus. He makes the first. Wesley Sean has 18. Nate Bendel has a season high 16. The two senior big men for Utah State along that front court have really played well. Remember, Bendel had a slow start to this contest. Second half, though, he's been a much different player. 30.6 to go. Wesley makes them both. Back to an eight-point advantage. And the player of the year in the WAC can sense a tournament title here in Vegas. Not quite over yet, though. Boise State with the ball. Harriman will lay it in. Utah State fans thinking it's over. Foul on Boise State. Rocky Payne will be shooting. So for Aggies fans, the game is over. But 23.1 seconds to go. It is not over yet. Stu Morrill definitely not putting this one in the win column yet. Brock Keith Payne, a 79% free throw shooter on the season. And you and I have seen him hit a lot of big free throws in big moments. He hits another one here. Now the first, first time this tournament has been in Las Vegas, thanks in large part to Utah State and their strong following of their fans. It's been a very successful WAC tournament. Payne made them both. Now a substitution for the Utah State Aggies. Set up their defense. Boise State, literally now, they cannot waste any time. Lashard Anderson. They're going to need a miracle. Anderson and a whistle. He hits a shot, but they say the foul came before he flung it up there. Lashard Anderson arguing he should have an opportunity for a four-point play, and I'm not sure he's wrong. Anderson, uh, he's got a pretty good argument here. Let's listen. When that hand goes up, he is in his shooting motion. Anderson misses the first free throw, and that it probably wouldn't have mattered, but uh, I'm sure Boise State would have liked to see what had happened had he made that shot they counted it and given Anderson the the one free throw extra still an eight-point lead he could have cut it to four in theory there with 19 seconds to go now the baseball pass Payne will catch and smartly turn it back Boise State will foul Brocky Payne and Brocky Payne has played so well in the later stages of this season, and in particular tonight in the championship game. What a player here. His first year started his career at Houston, went to a junior college, transferred to Utah State. And Rocky Payne, after some wobbly moments early in the year, trying to get used to Stu Morrill's system, he has become right there with Ty Wesley, the key piece for this Aggies team. And looking at this team in the NCAA tournament, how do they fare? Well, obviously a lot of that depends upon matchups. Uh, but the one thing Utah State does is they defend very well. They make you take contested looks on your offensive end. And they have balanced scoring on the offensive end. You know, you don't have one guy. And Ty Wesley's put up 19. Brocky Payne's got 19. But 
And this isn't a team that's going to overwhelm you with one or two weapons at the offensive end. Perryman launches a long three, and Perryman oh. hits it, so the game still not over. Two possession game here, 11.7 to go. Payne will take the inbound pass and launches it down court. Here's Morgan Graham with an exclamation point. Nichols three, no good. Payne tosses it up in the air, and the Aggies will celebrate in midcourt. Security brought out a red rope to try to keep the students away. Nothing was going to keep them away from celebrating this victory as Stu Moral squad wins their 30th game of the season. They were the regular season champ in the WAC. They're the conference tournament champions as well. And they're back in the NCAA tournament. Ty Wesley, the player of the year in this league, could celebrate. Utah State, the second time they've won this WAC tournament championship. And they had to earn it here tonight, Sean. Boise State played very hard, played very well. But this Aggies team in the end was just too tough. Too tough because of their interior presence. Too tough because their team awareness at the defensive end of the floor. And Ty Wesley, the MVP, is enjoying the basketball and the celebration because they're dancing on Selection Sunday. So party here for the Aggies in Las Vegas. A sigh of relief from lots of bubble teams around college basketball. Final score of the WAC championship game. Utah State 77, Boise State 69. For Sean Farnham, our great crew, Dave Fleming, saying so long from Vegas. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.